Hey guys, how you doing? This is Benjamin with Benjamin the Galactic, and in this video today, we're going to be discussing something that doesn't get talked about too much in the reptile hobby, um, which is going to be reproduction. Now, this is not really the breeding, this is um, how babies are produced, which is egg layers versus live birth. We're going to be looking at the pros and cons of each, and in my opinion, which one is overall better for the snake. So, uh, let's get straight into the video. Um, I have a ball python with me today, so... I'm kind of being biased because I only have one snake that could give live birth, but and the rest, you know, are egg layers. But um, I'll explain in a little bit um, why I do this. But um, first of all, pros for egg layers, okay? Um, pros: the female can move freely once she's laid the eggs, and she doesn't have you know this big load that she's dragging on her the whole time. That could be slowing her down from getting food and water. So. Uh, the girl that lays eggs is going to be able to eat quicker as well because she's going to lay her eggs, going to be able to go out in the wild, or same thing with captivity, is going to be able to go out and get on food much quicker and get up to size much quicker than, you know, a boa or something that's not going to eat basically through their whole pregnancy. They're going to be off food for, you know, four months versus two months. So half the time in terms of when the female can then go back on food. Um, uh, besides that, those are really the two only main pros to eggs that we're not that will you know we'll talk a little bit more about the safeness for the snake at the end of the video but the two main benefits are the female can you know move around freely move from danger she's not going to get you know dragged down and killed and not be able to move if she really needs to and the fact that you know they're going to be able to go back on feed and get more up to size a lot quicker so those are the two pros for you know eggs now let's look at live births we're talking you know boas anacondas um, things like that are going to be, you know, garter snakes or the snakes that give live birth. Um, those are the, you know, top examples. When we're looking at live birth, the main pros for this are that the mother, the, the eggs don't have a chance to get eaten, number one, because, you know, where pythons live most of the time, you have monitor lizards, right? And they're out there hunting, smelling, digging up dirt, and when they find a python nest, it's just like, you know, Easter for them. They're going crazy with eggs and eating all of them. So the eggs have a, the babies have a less chance of dying because they're in the mother. The only way that, you know, monitor lizard is going to get those babies is if it goes through the mother. And most of the time, the monitor lizards are not interested in eating the snakes. They just want to get the eggs. So the babies have a better chance at, you know, surviving and not getting eaten in the egg stage. Um, the second one is that, uh, you know, you don't have any incubation, basically. Um, the mother just moves around. So she is, while she's not as mobile, you know, once they lay the eggs, they're more mobile. But she can still move around and she doesn't have to drag eggs, which, you know, a normal snake can't do. When a female ball python lays her eggs, that's where she'll sit until they're completely hatched out and everything, Right. Uh, with a boa, she can still move around and adjust the temperature to the babies. And in terms of captivity, one of the pros of, you know, live birth, or, you know, snakes that have live birth or live babies, just no eggs to deal with, they have the eggs inside of them, is that you don't have to deal with incubation. So you don't have to worry about, you know, like we just talked about, in captivity, it's much easier if you can just come in one day and have all the little babies be crawling around, you don't have to deal with eggs. And it's also cheaper in that, you know, way. Now, here's the big question. Now, if you have a snake that, you know, has live birth and it, you know, does any of that stuff, that's completely fine. I'm not against it, of course, because um, it is, you know, the way that, you know, snakes produce. But let's talk about in captivity with breeding. Snakes that have eggs versus live birth. This is where we're going to get into some really big pros and cons. So, here we go. Uh, let's look at the egg side first. Here's... I can't really think of too many pros on the egg side. Um, the only pros that I can really think of is that maybe you could, produce, you could predict your results faster. Or, oh, actually, yeah, your females will get weight on food way quicker and be able to get up to size much quicker than they would normally if they were just giving live birth because they'll lay the eggs, then eat. They don't have to have eggs in them for, you know, twice as long. Because, you know, two months to develop, two months to incubate. Very simple. Um, those are really the only two benefits for captive breeding, but here's some of the, you know, the only benefits and then for boas or things that have live birth is going to be that you come in one day, don't have to deal with eggs, there's just a bunch of babies, boom, you're good and set to go. Now there's a much bigger toll, and this is rare, this is not something that, you know, is going to happen every single time, but it is something to think about. Um, in my opinion, if I could choose, if I had to choose one over the other, I would have all snakes be egg layers versus live birth. And you guys might be saying, well, 
with everything you just said about how eggs in the wild get eaten and they're safer with the mother and you know one day you can just walk in and have the babies you don't have to deal with eggs or anything like that how could you say that here's the problem with giving live birth let's say i breed this female right here okay she's um, we're getting her up to size she's not eating right now but this pastel a 66 percent het lavender albino female let what if we were going to try to breed her right she'd have eggs lay eggs everything would be good let's say we try to breed her and she gets the eggs stuck inside of her while it's not the best thing, okay, it's not something we want, it's actually, from what most people say and from what I've seen and talked to different breeders, it's actually not that life-threatening it is if you don't catch it and if you're not there and if you can't help her out. But really what you're going to do is just find some way to work those eggs down and normally they'll pass it on their own. Nine out of ten times the snake will be fine. Maybe ten percent of the time they'll need to have some sort of surgery and maybe two or three percent of the time they actually die from it. Um... Very rare to have them die from it. Normally you can just work the eggs out because of their shape. And even though you might break the eggs, you're going to save the snake's life. So, you might lose an egg or two, but you're still going to have, you know, a snake to breed next year. When we're looking at boas and stuff like that, garter snakes, while everything normally goes completely fine, just like with these guys, if you get babies stuck in the snake, uh, you're going to have some really big problems. Because they're not going to be a shape where you can just work them out. Okay, um, if the snake gets tired, it's not something you're going to be able to stick your, you know, uh, sexing probes in and help to ease out like an egg. Um, it's going to be a bunch of little babies and yolk sacs and stuff that you are not going to be able to get out. So that's number one. So if you ever would get a problem with the babies getting jammed in, you're literally probably going to have to either hope for the best and really help her out in some miraculous way that I, you know, can't really think of right now or that breeders haven't told me. Or you're going to have to get surgery on the snake. Because um, if not, the snake will die from that. And, you know, with egg layers, it's just so much easier. You just work it out. And normally, then, once it is at this end, you can either pop it and pull it out. Or they'll just, you know, do it on their own. When we're looking at boas, it's a completely different story. Another thing. You really... I'm, I'm going to keep saying boas just because boas are the easiest and most common example. But this goes for garter snakes, anything like that. Let's say you have a boa. Okay, let's say I have a ball python and I breed it a little bit too early and it just wasn't ready to develop everything and it just lays a bunch of slugs, okay? That's fine. It's just going to lay a bunch of slugs. Very, not very much damage except for some weight loss done to a snake that's bred a little bit too early. We're looking at our boa constrictors. If they're bred too early and if things go wrong inside, it does way more damage. Um, from what I've seen, I've had lots of breeders talk to me before and I even have some breeders that are, you know, locally to me, they breed boa constrictors and stuff like that, and they will literally not breed their boas until they're like five or six years of age. I'm not even kidding. Because they've had it done before where they've gone out, spent like 2000 bucks on an amazing quality boa, bring it in, try to get it up to, <coughs> excuse me, try to get it up to size as fast as they can, breed it, something miraculously bad goes on, and the animal unfortunately, you know, perishes and dies because it was bred too early. Again, not something that we're going to be expecting from every single clutch or even to happen barely ever, of course. But if you breed a ball python prematurely before it's really ready versus a boa prematurely before it's really ready, the chances of this snake dying are slim to none. Um, they're still basically slim to none to the boa, but let's say for every ball python that would die because of that, you're going to have like 10 or 20 boas die because of that with the percentage. So... Again, in my opinion, you know, I get why boas and stuff like that, especially garter snakes, have developed these systems where they hold the eggs. It increases their survival rate, and the female can move around. It doesn't have to, you know, guard eggs or anything. I get it. Um, it's a good idea, especially if there's monitor lizards around, like in Africa and stuff like that. But personally, in captivity, I would much rather own all snakes that laid eggs because... I just don't, I'd much rather, here's how I think about it. Ten eggs as babies are not even close to the value, to me, of one adult snake. Okay, that might sound a little bit bad, but really when they're babies, they're not fully developed yet. The adult is already living, thriving, and everything like that. So, hope you guys did enjoy this video. I'm not trying to deter anybody from getting a snake or breeding snakes that have live birth. I just thought I'd warn you guys of some of the things that, you know, eggs versus live birth, basically. So, hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And if you like the channel, please subscribe. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys later.